So it's a beautiful sunny day and we just showed up to the dump. We're gonna plug our noses, unload our... Today we are visiting the dump to see if we can find any treasure. We just got to the dump and it's a nice bright sunny day so let's go look for treasures. Can use. So I'm here to see if I can salvage a few things to take home to turn into treasures. It's a beautiful sunny day so let's go take a look around. Happy Sunday, my name is Alicia English and welcome back to my channel. We have been working on so much content for you guys and we are having a blast getting all of it ready. We're gearing up for our big show, but today I wanted to take a little bit of a break from making some of my content and do a video that I've been wanting to do for you guys. You have been asking a lot of questions about our new Trash to Treasure series. We have more of that content coming for you guys, but I wanted to address some of the questions that you guys have been asking. I personally have been really enjoying making the content for the Trash or Treasure series. It really fuels my creativity and it's always really fun for me to have the journey of finding the items. It's really hit and miss when I go to the dump. Probably eight out of 10 times that we visit, we don't find any items at all that we wanna bring home. So like I said, it's super hit and miss and you're not always going to find something that you're excited about to bring home. It's literally the dump. And so when you go there, it's sometimes nothing but trash. And I'm sure if I really dug through deep and actually got my hands dirty, I could probably find other useful items. But when I go there, I try just to scour sort of the top and see if there's anything good I can find to bring home. I don't actually sift through it and really kind of dig into the dump. I like to just see if there's anything right at the surface that really hasn't been there that long that I can give a new life to. I read through all of the comments on all of my videos and I know that you guys are super concerned about my safety at the dump. I have been going to the dump for a long time, just taking scrap and things that are leftovers from my business that can't be salvaged. And so I have some experience being at the dump and I know that there's a lot of really unsafe items that are there that I have to really be careful for. So just know that I'm not putting myself in any risk when I'm there. And I really know that I can't be digging through the contents that are there because it just wouldn't be safe for me. In some of my early Trash to Treasure videos, you'll notice that I didn't have steel toe boots and gloves. There's a reason for that. My Trash to Treasure series started by accident. I used to just go to the dump to drop things off. I wasn't actually there to take anything home. But the first couple of times we went, I realized that I was finding really useful things and I knew that I could give those things new life. And so you might notice that I didn't have those safety gears on. So thanks to all of your guys' suggestions, I did actually start continuing this series and taking extra precautions to make sure that my safety was number one priority. Also keep in mind that we are making a video while we're making the content. And so sometimes I do take my gloves off when I need to handle an item or when I'm working with our gear. Where in the world am I when I'm at the dump? You guys keep asking me, where is this magical dump spot where I find really great items? Uh, this is a legal dump spot, which is taken care of by an agency. It looks in the videos like I'm in a random forest that's just filled with trash. That's not how garbage is taken care of here in Canada. These are run by proper agencies that know how to take care of this. I choose not to show the signage of the location of where I am so that I can continue to do these videos, but I am in a legal dump spot. As I mentioned, this Trash to Treasure series happened by accident. I really started to notice when we were taking our lawn rubbish that there was so many things that were useful at the dump. And so I thought that creating this series could bring awareness to how much stuff is just so unnecessarily thrown out and how it affects our planet. It really is so sad when you go there and you see how many things that are there that people could still use if they would have just offered it to a neighbor or put it up for sale. For example, bringing awareness was really shown to me tonight. I live in a really small area and there was a neighbor down the road for me that knocked on my door as they were going to be getting rid of some pieces of furniture. They thought of me and they were more aware of rather than throwing this to the dump that maybe someone else could use it. So it's things like that and just small gestures that really can make a huge difference in how many things end up in our landfill and certainly made my night. Another question that I get often asked is what do I see when I go there? And people think that there's rats crawling all around and just needles everywhere and just really disgusting things. And that's true. There is some really gross stuff at the dump and it doesn't smell the best. 
but I have never seen rats at the dump and I rarely see things that I really think are like, oh, that's really disgusting. There's just a lot of local household trash and items there that probably could still be reused. You're probably wondering, what do I actually bring home from the dump? There's a list of things that I would never consider taking home from the dump. And there's a small list of things that I do bring home. I don't have a storage facility or a big area where I just store all this stuff that I bring home. I truthfully only bring home the items that you see me use in the videos. I don't have an area where I store a whole bunch of stuff that I could use later on. What you see is literally what you get from the dump. I don't bring home items that have anything to do with fabric on them unless I know that I can literally rip it off and leave it there and keep the framework, for example, a chair. The other things that I definitely don't bring home are anything that's like a cardboard or any type of board where I know moisture or really a lot of bacteria can get into. I like to look for pieces that have recently been dropped off that haven't really been sitting there. Dump is only open on certain days of the week, which makes it easier to know that the items that are there have probably been dropped off that day. And so I like to look for solid wood furniture, even plastic pieces of furniture and items that I know can clean easily and be restored really quickly. How do I know what to do with the items that I found? If I don't have an idea right away when I see something, I will leave it there. Even if it's a useful item, I need to know that I have a purpose or a plan for the item before I bring it home or I'm just bringing home literally garbage. And so I wanna make sure that when I see an item, I'm like, okay, I know I can do this with it. I know that, that it would serve this purpose and I know that I could use it here or that someone could use it for this use. The first thing we do when we leave the dump is come home and unload all the items outside so they can be properly cleaned before we use the items. I have a process that I use to make sure that none of the items that we are bringing in have any insects or anything that's going to harm us in any way and they're brought into my shop area which is not directly into our home. So I know that these items are taken care of properly before they would enter any living spaces then we also change and shower and get ourselves all clean before we make the content for our videos. One of the great things about bringing items home from the dump is that it keeps it out of the landfill and gives it a new life or new purpose. So after I'm done creating the videos, I can either sell or donate the items that I've restored. I had no intentions of selling anything that actually came from the dump. When I'm creating my videos, a lot of my clients that I have for my furniture refinishing business will see the items that I've restored and they'll say, oh, I have to have that piece. And so I actually have been selling items that come from the dump. The seller that I'm selling it to always knows that that item originally did come from the dump. Are my items really from the dump? All of the things that you see on all of the content on my channel is all 100% the way that it happens. I'm not duping you guys. Everything that you guys see on my content is real, honest, real life stuff. I have not visited very many dump spots, but I can assure you that if you go to your local dump or your city dump, you will find amazing items that you know you can give new life to. A lot of you comment to me that it's not legal for you to go to your local dump. So make sure that you check out what the legalities are where you live. If you don't have a dump spot, thrift shops, Secondhand stores and charity shops are a great way to find really inexpensive items that you can restore and refinish. It's also amazing to know that there's a lot of free sites online where you can barter and trade with people for different items. Another question you guys keep asking me is if I do my YouTube content full time. I am so fortunate and because of all of your guys' support that I am now doing this full time. I'm creating in my everyday life full time in my own home and it's the best ever. I have some goals for our channel, some short term and some long term. Some I'll share with you down the road, but my main goal right now was to be able to work on my content full time to be able to inspire more people. We're going to be doing more Trash to Treasure videos coming up, but we have another new series coming to our channel at the end of the month. I don't know about you, but I love Pinterest, but I find that there are a lot of projects on there that can be done much more thriftly and with upcycled materials. So we are starting a new series where we're going to take Pinterest projects and make them into a more thrifted and upcycled way. Let me know in the comment section what you think of our new series topic. You guys have also been asking if I'm going to be doing any footage at my upcoming craft show. Of course, I can't possibly leave you out of that. So we are going to be filming our setup and while we're there, and then we'll be doing a recap at the end to let you know how it all went. We've been working on a lot of holiday content while we prep for our big craft show. I have a Christmas DIY playlist on my channel where you can catch some of the DIYs I did last holiday season in addition to the new ones we're putting on now. We hit 65,000 YouTube family members today. I couldn't believe when I woke up this morning and my channel said 65,000 subscribers. Are you guys kidding me? This is crazy. Thank you so much for all the support. I can't believe how fast our channel is growing and it's thanks to all your guys' love and support. 
We are so close to our 100,000 subscriber milestone and I can't wait to get there. Thank you to everyone who's been sharing our content. It really helps our channel grow and the support and feedback that you guys give us is just absolutely phenomenal. We have a really cool idea on what we're gonna do when we hit our milestone of 100,000. So please don't forget to hit that subscribe button so we can get there quicker. You guys have also been asking me some personal questions that have nothing to do with our trash to treasure and I thought I would be really quick just to answer them before. I know this has been a lot of talking in this video, but we try to answer as many questions as we possibly can, but we're getting hundreds of comments in each of our videos. So this is just a quick way to be able to answer questions that we keep getting on repeat. One of my questions that I get asked all the time is do I wear makeup and is my hair straight or curly? <laughs> the question or the answer to that question is I rarely wear makeup, especially when I'm doing my videos because I'm working in the shop and I work from home. So you often see me wearing my favorite hoodies that have paint on them and I'm not wearing makeup, but that's just real life. This is just me at home working in my shop doing this with you guys on the other end. And the question of is my hair straight or curly? My hair is straight. It's just long and straight. If you see it curly in the videos, it means I probably removed my braids that you see me wearing all the time, which I do braid myself because I get asked that all the time. Thank you guys so much. I love having you guys on the other end of our videos, supporting us and sending us so much love. I love you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next video. Wait, don't go yet. Don't forget about our Made with Love challenge. I'm challenging everyone as much as they can this Christmas to make upcycled or reused items and handmade to lower down the consumption that we're buying for Christmas holiday season. So if you're using anything that you're giving someone as a handmade gift, make sure to hashtag me on any social media at Alicia English, hashtag Made with Love.